Yeah. The problem is I thought it was perfect the first year I started writing. I was like, <laughs> this is the best, best shit I've ever written. Um, and then I quickly found out that it wasn't. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the big leagues. Tony don't miss me. Ballin' like Houston. Hey, feeling like Whitney. I need a bag, bruh. Send it too quickly. I'm making his dog. Like I'm in the big leagues. Told him that I gotta go, dog. I'm riding a road, y'all. I think that I'm back in my So what is your business? What do you do today? Well, uh, technically I've got an e-commerce site, but I'm a writer. How long have you been doing this for? How long have you been a writer for? Uh, I started in 2000. Yeah, so just t 10 years. I yeah. started in 2011. And have you always done it full time? Have you had side gigs, side hustles? Is it, you know, are you fully sufficient as a writer? Yeah, or not yet. I wish. That's the goal. It's That's the goal. Yeah, okay. to be full time writing. Um, I mean, at the moment, I'm in advertising. So I suppose writing in my, my online business is a side, side hustle. But it's the... It's the main goal. It's like the primary focus. Yeah. Yeah. So I've had, I've had other jobs on the side. What are some of those jobs that you've done? Yo, so fresh out of high school, I was in retail. Um, I au paired for a little bit. And, uh, and then from there, I just jumped into advertising, which is incredibly helpful as a, as an entrepreneur, as a self-published author, you know, to learn the, the ins and outs of marketing a product. And so how did, how did you get things going with writing? How did you get into it? How did you realize that that's something you wanted to do? What were the like beginning stages? Where was the idea or the thoughts or the passion planted? How did that mm. get going? Yeah. Well, I mean, as far back as I can remember, I've always had, uh, fantastical ideas. So I've, I've, I've had a vivid imagination like my whole life. Even so as I, a kid, even as a kid, I mean, yeah. my, my toys, my figurines were, you know, characters, in you know my bedroom was a country and like my my figurines were people there you know so i used to create empires and go to war dude like <laughs> every day man every day i was just going to war with some you know like spider-man figurine whatever um but yeah as i grew older I kind of developed into taking an interest in stuff like um knights from england um when i was introduced to books like lord of the rings that like changed the game for me so that introduced me to civilizations like elves. Um, so for anyone who's read my books, you know, like I love elves and that's what I write about. Mm -hmm. um, my characters are all elves. Um, yeah, so just developed from there. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So tell me a bit about some of the things you've written that like, uh, what's their names? What do you have out? Do you have a whole series out? Yeah, do you yeah. have, what's, what's a bit of the, the structure at the moment? Uh, well, I've got five short stories and then a novel. Mm -hmm. Um, the five short stories are pretty much the foundation for the novel. So it's the introduction into my, into my world. Like the, it's pretty much the equivalent to the Hobbit to the Lord of the Rings. Okay. So my five short stories, um, vary from, Action based, so like the first short story, The Evening Tide, is very action based, political, um, with some love elements there. Second one is a tragic love story, straight up. Um, third one is like a thriller and uh, detective investigation oh, yeah. story, all set in a fantastical world of elves, like in a medieval era. So the short stories and the novel, it's all the same world. All yeah? the same okay. world, all the same What's world. What's the novel? What's the name of the novel? The novel is Upon the Sands, okay. which is book one of a huge series called a symphony of shadow and, and darkness. And I say Oof, huge because I love that. That's, yeah. that's naughty. Yeah. It's a bit naughty. Eh? <laughs> a little scandalous. Eh? Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, shadow, uh, the symphony of shadow and darkness is the main series. And, uh, I think there'll be about five to seven books. Yeah. So how did you manage with, you know, working full-time jobs and like, you said advertising, I think advertising, how did you do right? How did you get writing done? Was it just like nine to five to come home? graft on writing kind of thing or what was the structure how did you get that done yeah Carl, i'll tell you what i did i basically said that all my, my i basically took out took my social life yeah and chucked it in the bin okay <laughs> that's exactly what i did i basically said okay cool all fun and laughter and and you know jawling let's not do that yeah in the name of writing yeah you got focused okay. yeah exactly basically that's that's what it is so when i wasn't working to pay the bills I was at home yeah. writing and it was fun. So, you know, I joke around about it, but, um, uh, it was fun. You know, I think, yeah. I think anyone, if you, if you're focused and grafting and doing something that you love, it's not even work. It's just fun. So even after a long day working at like an advertising agency, you come home, would you easily almost every day sit down and just write or would uh, it sometimes be like, oof, 
Like I really don't feel like doing this right now. Yeah, I, just have to power I think weekends were reserved to, uh, for writing. So especially in advertising. So my role in advertising is a copywriter, which is me writing every day. So when I get home, I'm definitely not writing. I also write better in the mornings. Okay. Um, so yeah, I would work during the week and then weekends were just, uh, was made up primarily of me just in front of my laptop grafting. Okay. Yeah. So, um, otherwise I'd wake up very early in the morning. Before work. Before work. Yeah. Okay. Depending if I felt inspired or not. Yeah. Yeah. So what was the kind of initial investments you needed, especially or specifically for the, the novel? The novel. I'm assuming you, you needed to, to have some kind of, you know, funds invested into it. Sure. With sure. any business venture or new venture, you need to put cash into it generally. Yeah. Yeah. To of get course. things going. So what, what was the initial investment that you needed? The initial um, investment. So yeah. you want a number. If, if you can remember, yeah. um, uh, or maybe you can do initial and then maybe how much you put in to date, you know, that's mm. accumulated over time. Production was about 30 grand. Okay. Production was about 30 to 30, yeah, 30 to 35 grand. Is production getting them printed and getting just, them printed, yeah. formatted, yeah. edited, um, yeah, yeah, editing and proofreading, formatting, uh, and, uh, printing. Okay, so 30 grand. Was 30, that the initial investment? That was the initial investment. Then there was marketing. Um, yeah, I think I, I spent about 50 grand overall releasing upon the stats. How long between starting writing it and releasing it has it been? 10 years. Oh, so it's your, you've been working on it. I've been working on it. Re rewrite after rewrite. Okay, I mean, you, wanted, you obviously wanted to perfect it. You didn't want to release something that wasn't in your eyes, you know. Yeah. The problem is I thought it was perfect the first year I started writing. I was like, <laughs> this is the best, best shit I've ever written. Um, and then I quickly found out that it wasn't. Okay. So, <laughs> so well, I, uh, we love that. Yeah. So I had to spend some time um, perfecting it actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and getting it to a place where, so, you know, I would read it over and over again and just do rewrites after rewrites. Um, and every single time I'd get to a chapter, I'd be like, cool, this is amazing. Next chapter, okay, this is not so much. Um, but by the time it was ready for publishing, I would, every single chapter that I read, I was just like, this is, this hits the spot. And I think from there, I knew, cool, it's ready. Okay. Yeah. And based on the reviews and the feedback, it's, uh, I was right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And so on that 50 grand, what kind of returns have you seen so far? Has it been up to, up to standard? Has it been a bit behind? Yeah. You know I mean? Because obviously in investing it, you had an idea of how long it would take for you to make it back maybe, and then maybe move into profits kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Has it been what you expected, but below? Yeah. It's, I, I haven't made profits yet. Um, but at the same time, my launch, you know, generated, it generated over 20 grand. Okay. Just so the launch. Wow. Just the launch. Yeah. So, um, if the, you know, like just on, in, in light of that and considering that, that I'm a no name at this point and still, you know, coming up, um, I'm very proud of, of the outcome. Yeah. That's epic. Yeah. Okay. And, but I also believe that when it comes to, when it comes to products and startups or whatever business there's, is there, there, there is going to be initial loss in the beginning. Um, but, uh, the cool thing is the products out there yeah. and, uh, I'm anticipating, um, that eventually, you know, the returns are going to start coming in. Yeah. And in, you know, in doing any kind of personal venture or pursuit or whatever, there's always challenges and hurdles and struggles. What yeah. is, what is one of the biggest challenges or hurdles you've faced? I think it's just the, the natural process of perfecting your product. Um, you know, you release something and, uh, someone comes back to you. It goes, all right, cool. This section wasn't up to par or this section was a bit, you know, um, sketchy. So then I have to go through the, the, the motions of, uh, taking the product down, redoing it, perfecting it, releasing it again. Yeah. Have there been, you know, as a, an artist, cause it's an art. Yeah. It's quite against the norms of, you know, society. You know, when someone says, I want to be a musician, I want to be a writer, I want to be this. It's always a little bit like, Ooh, but there's not. The, the, I think the common perception is there's not much money there, mm. you know, unless you make it really big. Yeah. So I know I'm pretty sure that makes it quite tough to keep going. Have you ever like doubted it? Like, yeah, I don't of give course. A shit what people of say. course I've doubted it. It's been, and it was and during those times, it was difficult because I'm quite in love with what I do. So to get into that space where you're doubting, doubting you love, yeah. yeah, it's quite tough. Um, the cool thing is, at this point now, there is enough feedback from people 
that in times where I am doubting myself, I can just look at the results of what I've put out there and uh, look you know, back at the history and look back at the yourself, history, yeah. the reviews that I, that I've been getting um, since I since I published my first story. There is going to come a point where someone just doesn't appreciate your art. Someone doesn't, you know, appreciate what you're doing, what you've done, or someone who, who just can't see your vision. And, uh, you know, those people are going to give your stuff a try and they're not going to enjoy it. Um, it's just the nature of art. I mean, you've got yeah. incredible artists today who have, you know, who are just sitting on mountains of accolades. Um, but you're still going to get the person, someone that comes around and just goes, now they shit or they ain't, you know, they ain't they the bomb. Yeah. So it's just the nature of art. Um, so it's something that I've had to kind of get a, get a thicker skin for. It's something that when I do deal with the doubt, because it still comes, there's still moments where I'm like, cool. Um, maybe I'm not as, maybe my stories aren't as great as I think they are. Uh, when that doubt comes, I just kind of look at the success that I've had and uh, I'm encouraged again. Yeah, yeah, fair yeah. enough. And so as, you know, as Jeremy... Forsyth, the author, mm. writer, what would it look like to you? What would it look like to sit back and feel like you've made it? Shit, dude. If I can go, if I can go overseas twice a year without worrying about my financial state when I get home, I think to me that's, that's how I measure success in my to business. To be able to travel. Yeah. yeah, to be able to travel. Um, you know, one day when I get married, to be able to look after my family without having to, to you know, to worry about you know, finances, finances, I think financial freedom to me, when I feel like I'm not restricted in any way, you know, still staying in the bounds of being responsible. Um, when I'm in that space, I think to me, I will sit back and go, cool. I'm, I, I have succeeded. And that doesn't necessarily mean I have to be driving a Ferrari or, you know, you know, living that jet life, but financial freedom in that capacity in a very, uh, small capacity, I would say. And if there was one thing you could do differently, is there anything you would have done differently? Because, you know, in any venture, you also come across crossroads, you know, where mm. you're sometimes forced to make decisions. Yeah. Is there some that come to mind where you think if I actually went this way instead of the way I did go, it could have turned out better? So I don't think I would have wasted money on paid advertising. Um, I think there are, there are platforms such as Goodreads that that's where your audience is. And I think I would have spent a lot more of my time on Goodreads than on Facebook. Instagram, Twitter, and all that stuff. I think there is some, I think it does help to some degree, but at the same time, yeah. in terms of in putting money into it, I don't think I would have done that. Yeah. I don't do that anymore. I don't yeah. waste my time with that. I would have I would have taken a year, I would have spent a year doing marketing research before I actually published my first short story. So I think if I could go back, I would have prioritized research. You know, So I think most authors fall into this trap you know we're creatives and we're the artists and that's what we're passionate about but when you're going out on your own and you don't have a publisher behind you you have to be the creative and you have to be the marketer yeah. um and i wish i knew i wish someone had sat me down and told me that prior to releasing anything i would have saved a lot of money and i would have saved a lot of time educating myself on actually how do i find my audience mm -hmm. um where do i put my product and um what do i do you know to you know, put my product in front of mold and stuff. Yeah. Way. Instead of learning the lessons afterwards and trial paying, and error paying the school fees. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Trial and error is helpful, but it's uh it's drained. It's costly. It's costly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, so genuinely, would you say you're happy? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, there's still a long way to go. I feel um, in terms of my business. Um, personally, I believe I'm the happiest I've ever been just in my own personal growth. Um, in terms of my, my business and my books and promoting, promoting these stories that I love so much, I'm content. Okay. I'm content. Yeah. I can see that there's progress. I can see that people are responding really well. Um, and I have built a small following very slowly, but gradually, which I think is a huge achievement. Yeah. It's epic. It's epic. Yeah. Um, when I first, prom when I first released my, my, the evening tide to get one sale was a mission. Um, and now I've got a monthly, you know, I'm selling regularly every single month now, Okay. which is to me, I think is, yeah, yeah. I'm very, I'm very content. Okay. Yeah. And lastly, what is one message you would give to a potentially new young writer, you know, who's, who's thinking about pursuing a, a career as a writer? Research, 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 do your, do your research, find out how you're going to market your, your books. Don't be afraid of failure or critique. 
um, because because you know that's just part of the thing or a sense of failure. You know, if you fail in in whatever venture you're going in, like don't be afraid of failure. Just keep going. Um, but yeah, market research and uh, just just research the how out of who, where, where your audience is, what what they respond to, um, and uh, yeah. So when your book is finally ready and you believe it's perfect, you'll know what to do with it. And instead yeah. of wasting your time, wasting money. Yeah, you'll you'll get your book in, into the right into the right hands. Yeah. Well, yeah. Shout for coming on the show, bro. Uh, oh, yeah. I look forward to seeing how things unfold. I'm keen to hear what your game plans are. Yeah. When you when you are ready it's dangerous to stuff, re- man. reveal them. Yeah. It's dangerous stuff. Yeah. But yeah, shout for coming on the show. What is up, you absolute weapons? Thank you for watching and listening to None of Your Business. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and all of those beautiful places, you can find the links in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Until next time. Like I'm in a big loop.